Welcome back everybody to another Python Pandas tutorial. Often, after you have created your data sets or pulled in your data sets, a few of the first things you want to do with your data or to your data is to sort it or to get some totals or some parts of the data or count certain elements in your data. So that's what we're going to do for this tutorial. We're going to sort, sum, and count. Let's go ahead and jump right in and get started. The first thing we did here is we imported Pandas. Then we have gone ahead and pulled in some CSV data and we have assigned it to the states data variable. To pull that in, we use pandas.readcsv and then inside the round brackets and quotes, we put our path for where that data is. So let's go ahead and show you that that is on the desktop and take a quick look at it. So here is the states data and it's just a simple set of data with the states, their capital, their approximate population, and the region that each state falls into. Okay, and we use the delimiter of the comma. Now let's go over some of our sort examples. Let's go ahead and pull up our state's data. Now one way you can do that is to type the variable name in your console here, or you could put it in a print over here and then run it. Let's just go ahead and type it here and hit return, and we get a quick preview of our state's data. Now currently, this is in order by state name alphabetically, but let's say that we wanted to put it in order by population from largest to smallest. Now one way we can do that is we can reference the state's data variable name use a dot and then access sort values. And then inside the round brackets, we want to put what we want to sort by. And you can see we've used by equals and then in the square brackets, we put the state name. So let's go ahead and change this to population. And to sort in descending or largest to smallest, we can assign false to ascending. And obviously if you wanted it in ascending or smallest to largest, you would put true. Now once again, we could put that inside of a print and run it, but in this case, let's just go ahead and take this code and copy it and put it into our console here and hit return. And you can see we get all of our data with the states sorted from the largest population to the smallest. Okay, so we've gone ahead and cleared our console. And just one quick note before we move on, oftentimes if you make changes in your code and then you go over to your console and you try to see the results, you may have to go ahead and run it for those changes to take effect. And you could just hit this run file button here. Okay, moving on to our next example. Let's say that you wanted to sort by one column and then another. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at our data again. So let's say that we wanted to sort by the region and then we wanted to sort by the population. One way to do that is reference your state's data. Again, use a dot and the sort values and inside the round brackets assigned to the by argument and in square brackets, we put our region first and then we put our population. And again, we want this from largest to smallest so we assign false to ascending. Now we could copy this data and put it in our console or we can just copy this variable. Let's go over here and put it in our console, paste it and run it. So now you can see we have our regions, they're all together with west, south, northeast, and midwest. And for each region, they are in order of population, largest to smallest. Next up, let's go over an example of how you could sort your data by the column headers. So let's go ahead and take a look at our data frame one. And you can see that the column headers are currently in order A, B, C, D, E. But what if we wanted to put those in reverse order? One way we could do that is to reference your data frame one, then use a dot and access sort index, and then inside the round brackets, assign one to the axis, and that should correspond to the columns. And then for ascending, we're going to assign false. So let's go ahead and copy this. As always, you could just go ahead and leave it in your print and run it, but let's go ahead and put it in the console, paste it, and hit enter. So now you can see, instead of A through E, we have it sorted in reverse order, E through A. Okay, moving on to our sum examples. Let's go ahead and clear our console. Let's pull up our states data again. And let's say that we wanted to get a total sum for all of the populations, for all of the states. To do that, we have created our variable, and then we have assigned, referencing the states data, 
we choose the column header name that we want to sum and then after the square brackets we use a dot and we access sum. So let's go ahead and copy this variable and take a look at the total sum. Okay, so you can see that the approximate total sum of population for all 50 states is about 320 million. Now this is just a little bit hard to read without the thousands separator, so let's go ahead and try and put the thousands separator commas in. One way to do that is we can use this code here with a type of string interpolation and inside the curly brackets we put a colon and a comma then we use the dot format and inside the round brackets we put the sum population. So let's paste that and hit enter. So now we can see the total population with the thousands separator is just a little bit easier to read. Next up, let's go over an example of how you can sum your population, but let's say you want the sum for each region. So for example, let's say that you wanted the sum for South, West, Northeast, and or Midwest. So it's basically like getting subtotals. Now one way to do that is to reference your state's data, use a dot, access the group by, and inside the group by round brackets, since we want to group by the region, we put that inside the round brackets inside quotes, and then since we want to sum the population, we put that after the round brackets in square brackets. Then finally we use a dot and we access the sum. And since we assign that to this variable, let's go ahead and copy that, put it in our console, and hit enter. So here we can see the sums of the populations for each region, or you could think of those as subtotals of populations for each region. Another thing that is nice to see sometimes is the percent. So for example, let's say that we wanted to see the percent of total for each of these regions. And to do that, you can use code similar to this. So we've taken the population by region, and then we have divided it by the total times 100. So let's go ahead and copy this variable, put it in our console, and there we have the percent of total for each of the regions. Okay, moving on to our count examples. One of the first things you might want to do to get a better understanding of your data is to get a count for the rows and columns. Okay, so to get those counts, you can use your state's data and access shape. Let's go ahead and paste that and hit enter. And we can see that our state's data is 50 rows by four columns. Now what if you wanted to get a count for the number of states in each region? To accomplish this, we've used our state's data, a dot, and we've accessed group by. Then we've put the region in the group by round brackets. Then after the round brackets, we use square brackets, and we put in the state, and we want the number of unique elements for each state in the region. So to access that, we use a dot, and then we type out in unique with the round brackets. So let's go ahead and copy this, paste, and return. So the count of states in the Midwest is 12. For the Northeast, it's 9. For the South, it's 16. And the West, it's 13. Let's go over another example using a data frame. So you can see here we have created our data frame. Let's go ahead and take a look at what that data frame looks like. So we have three columns of data with five rows. So let's say that we wanted to know the number of unique values in this first column here, column A. We can use this code here for that. So we have referenced our data frame two, and then in the square brackets, we put the column name, and then we use a dot and access in unique. And we can see for column A, there are two unique values, green and blue. If you wanted the number of unique values for B and C, all you'd have to do is change that A to the appropriate column name. Moving on to our last example, let's say that you wanted to count missing or not available values. Now, quick note, there are different ways to refer to missing values or values that are not available, and we'll get into more details about that in future tutorials. For these missing value examples, we've gone ahead and we've imported another file. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at that. It's on our desktop here. So here we have some data, three columns, and we can see for each column, there are some blank cells or missing values. Here, 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 and here. Now, as we all know, when dealing with data, it's not uncommon for values to be missing, and you may want to get a count for those missing values. Now one way to get a count for those missing values is to use your variable name for the data set that you've pulled in, 
Then use square brackets and reference the column that you want to get a count for those missing values. So we're going to go ahead and reference column 1 and then after the square brackets use a dot and access value counts. Then inside the round brackets you want to assign false to drop in A. So first things first, let's go ahead and take a look at our data. Okay, so where there were missing values, we get NAN, but we can see in column one, there are two missing values. Okay, so with this code, we should be able to count those missing values. So let's go ahead and copy this variable, paste it, and hit return. And you can see for the NAN, or missing or not available values, we get two. You'll also notice that you get the counts for each of the values. Okay, so there are four A's, three B's, and so on. If you wanted to get a tally count for the values and missing values in other columns, you just simply change that to the appropriate column header name here. Okay, so that's all we have for this Python Pandas tutorial on the basics of sort, sum, and count. We will be doing many more Python tutorials in the near future. Join us for those, and we'll see you next time.